What's up YouTube? My name's Eric Young. Welcome back to another exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some cloth physics slash dynamics, whatever you want to call it, inside of Cinema 4D and then we'll be exporting it into Element 3D to create something like this or something like this. So let's go ahead over here into Cinema 4D and get started. I'm going to go ahead and cheat and use the cloth surface I've already built so that I can look at the settings as we go along. I'm also going to include this project file. Just cloth right here and this will be this project file so if you'd like to you can just go ahead and make something like a ball add a dynamic tag to it go to collision, go to colliders and then parent the ball or whatever you want to collide with it into the glider and click play and it will just go ahead and collide and so how I did the soccer ball was very similar. I imported a soccer ball model, added the tag. And you get the idea. You'll have to mess around with the settings to make it look just right. So let's set the strength to about 35. The distance you can turn up and down as much as you want. I believe that's uh, something like the fall off and here in the curve we'll just go ahead and just make a regular curve I believe this is also having to do with the amount of fall off the cloth has so mess around with this more to get proper settings same as restore shape it's set to 100% let's go ahead and crank that down really low or if you just want the cloth to fall completely just turn it off but we'll set it to like 15 for now. Let's go ahead and give this plane a collision. So there's also a cups, couple options here when you have it colliding get intersect inside stretch outside outside volume intersect we just want to find the one that lets it hold all right sometimes you have to turn it around I found inside stretch it's usually inside stretch or outside volume one or the other we'll just go ahead and pause it right there in the advanced settings, we'll set the relax something high like 150. Looks like here in our other settings, we have the stretch set to 8, the size set to 24, and the step set to 1. And the strut set to 18, stiffness set to 93, and the flex set to 100. It's so weird like that, like, outside. This one's set to outside volume. I don't know. It, it just, that's the one it chose. So there we have it. So then all you gotta do from there, simulate, simulate cloth, cloth surface. And then put the plane in the cloth surface. Make the thickness like two, 
five centimeters tops. Now let's take a little bit closer look at these settings though. Said sometimes you just gotta play around with the settings to make it look more like cloth. Every project's gonna need slightly different settings to look as good as you can possibly get it. It's just a matter of playing around. All right, so if you've seen my last two tutorials, then you know you know how to make fuse characters. If you haven't, please go watch them all. Include links for them and annotations at the end of this video. But if you haven't, you use fuse to make a character and it's very simple and then you import it as an fbx in here in the cinema 40 and then we'll export it into element 3d do file merge objects and also if you watch my past tutorial then you already know what i'm doing here you just group all of these Give it a name. Then make a ball, and we're going to use this as like a collider. And then in spine, neck, we'll find her head. Put it on her head. Then we'll go down to the collider. Drag it into the colliders, and now when we click play, it falls with her head. Alright, and then we'll just copy that sphere. Go ahead and bind it to her right hand. Just rinse and repeat, and don't forget to add them into the colliders. Maybe almost a little too high detail, if there is such a thing, but cloth doesn't always look super high detail, so turn down the segments. So that adds a few more smooth bands around instead of just those super tight, super round areas. So that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and export her to Element. Been advertising another YouTube video down there. So we'll go ahead and export her to Element 3D. One thing I want to quick out pointly one thing I want to quick quickly point out before we export though is that if you want to add a UV repeat to the cloth layer you're going to have to export the cloth layer and the girls separately so 
select the cloth layer, export, then select the girl and export. And then you'll have to line them up inside of Element 3D. It's not going to automatically line up when you import them. But I'm not going to add a UV repeat because I'm lazy and I want to show you how to make this. So we'll go ahead and group them. Make a place to save them. Go to plug and steady bake or whatever the red thing. Find the place you made to save it. And select file series, select all the checks, and click OK. Alright, so once it's done exporting, we'll go into Element 3D, I mean, After Effects, same thing. And we'll go ahead and use this scene I made earlier. This is the old uh, her jumping on the cloth I made. We just made a little bit more of a high t de detail version. So import 3D sequence and find where you saved it. Another important thing to do is when you export it, whatever file you export it to, it's going to automatically save the FBX uh, textures in a .fbm file. So copy or cut that actually. paste that in the same file with it and then open the first scene. Alright, so one thing we can't do unless we add a camera turn like this is add motion blur. Because if we use Element 3D's motion blur, it will. Because if we use Element 3D's motion blur, it's not going to detect every movement inside the baked animation. It's only going to detect the camera movement as motion blur. So if we want realistic motion blur, what we can do here is, as you see, I already have a adjustment layer set up and then just put pixel motion blur on top and then CC force motion blur on bottom to get the best blur quality. And then we'll turn that layer on. And now you can see it added motion blur for the camera but also if we move forward See, she now has her motion blur, and you can see a little bit of motion blur there in the back as well. So, it makes the final product look much more nice overall. So yeah, that's the gist of it, guys. If you like this tutorial, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks to everyone that's been subscribing, and stay tuned for more.